Right? Act two, everybody yeah, yeah. all right? right. Yep. All right. Ta -da, ta -da. Beauty, Side by Temmie Rose. Act two. Something familiar. The swimsuit competition is about to begin. The stage is empty. Arlen is setting up her equipment to shoot the contest. Grace is stage right to call the show. Maggie is in the house. May is stage left in a row. Ellen and Angela in the office are able to watch the pageant on a monitor while they do business. Hideous remonstrances. The burden of malice. Basic needs. Monkey see, monkey do. Don't be nice to the weirdo. If there was a place inside my heart for you, would you enter kindly, tenderly, or would you come to conquer, possess? I want to dance with her, create a world, a reality. Why not? The engine that drives conformity. No one wants to be the weirdo. Fears create the thought that we must associate with people who are more powerful, who have access to what we need. Because you really don't believe that you can take care of yourself. How much brutality should someone have to wade through? People have ascetic needs, not just basic needs. How much punishment for the crime of loving? We crave our own enslavement. If not to a person, then to an idea, a tradition, a revolution. Anything just so we can give the responsibility for our lives to someone else. The burden of significance weighs heavy on our hearts. I walk and walk and get no further than the back of the house. Our society tries to kill the smart kids. First, we drug them to silence, stillness, complacency. Then we ridicule their dreams. Then we teach them that the only respectable use for their intelligence is to serve someone else's purposes. Aren't we all making money for someone else? What is that about? So I said, I don't need your money, Sonny. I'm in it for the kicks. Not the ones you'd give me with your black boots, but the ones I get from reorganizing chaos. Are you an emotional vampire? We never had sex with each other again. Why is it so difficult to comprehend that each person is a gem? The contestants drop their robes and file on stage for the swimsuit parade. My family likes to improve their social position whenever possible. So, periodically, they make me a pawn in that game. One summer, my crotchety elderly great aunt, who I was forced to spend a month with because my parents were traveling or in love again or something, my great aunt ordered me to spend time with a girl my age who I'd never met but who lived down the street and was from a really good family. Better than ours. They were the country club crowd. So I go. And the mother of this girl opens the front door when I ring the bell and says, Go on upstairs. What's her name is waiting for you in her room. Her room is crazy enormous. You can fit three of my bedrooms in hers. That was my first impression. The floor was wall-to-wall -wall plush red carpet. The music blasting louder than I was allowed. And then her. She's lying on the floor, sorting tiny little dot things into color-coded piles. 
What are you doing? I say. If you get all the, I forget which colored ones, and take them, she says, you get really high. I find an excuse to leave and lie convincingly to my granny. Yes, indeed, I had a lovely time. They were very gracious. What is the first thing you remember? How old were you? You can get addicted to a certain type of conversation. Then, one really hot day, I was invited to the country club pool with them. My irritating great aunt insisted I go. Hot day. I stayed in the water and ignored the wasps. On the way home, in the back of the car, the dot sorting music blasting girl and I were laughing about how our sweaty thighs were sticking to the car seats, making funny noises when we tried to unstick them. The mother swiftly lurches the car to a stop on the side of the road, turns, faces us with a scrunched up angry face. We watch stunned as she spit hisses. Horses sweat! Men perspire and ladies glow. That summer was a long, sad song. Every eye in the observation fleet is trained on Dave's dream. The bombardier's supreme test is at hand as the bomb bay doors open. protect their eyes against the flash which blotted out the morning sun, men are adequately prepared as HR approaches. Even with these goggles, they saw a stab of light as brilliant as lightning, while those without goggles turned their backs and shielded their eyes with their arms. The bomb is away. It's falling. The seconds tick away. I want you to do one more thing for me.